Hi everyone, my name is Amber, welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with another project for you. So, I have heard many good things about Kristen Hanna. She's a very popular author. She has written a ton of books. I think she's written probably over 20 at this point, going by her Goodreads. And recently, with the release of, I believe, The Nightingale, she became a very popular author and her works became more mainstream, at least that's how it seemed to me. In the booktube community, a lot more people were reading her books after The Nightingale came out. And so, because I've never checked out a book by Kristen Hanna, before I decided I should get in on the hype I want to know what everyone is talking about and so I'm doing a project where I try to read all of her books and I'm going to see which one is best small disclaimer I'm not actually going to read every single one of her books because that would take absolutely forever and probably my entire year of reading would be taken up by Kristen Hannah books so I don't really want that so I've chosen her four most popular ones or rather her three most popular ones and then the fourth one is her newest release so I'm going to be reading Firefly Lane, The Great Alone and The Nightingale and also The Four Winds which I received as a a review copy so I'm going to be doing kind of like a vlogging sort of thing with each of these books I'm going to tell you my feelings as and when I feel them I guess and then at the end of the video we're going to be, be figuring out which book of hers I think is the best and which one I think you should start with which one I think is well worth your time as it stands right now I think I'm probably I don't know much about Firefly Lane so I'm gonna put that at the bottom I also don't know much about the Four Winds either so I'm gonna put that in here probably and then I think I'm probably going to enjoy The Nightingale the most because that's the most popular followed by The Great Alone followed by The Four Winds which is in there followed by Firefly Lane so at the end of the video it'll be interesting to compare what I was feeling here and also see how correct I was. I can't really give you a strong description of what any of these books are about right now because I have no idea. I know this one is set in World War II, this one is set in Alaska and I've got no clue about this one so as the video goes on I will tell you more about each of the books just so you know what I'm talking about. I hope you enjoy this video I hope it's a lot of fun for you I'm going to try to figure out how to put the uh, timestamp things in so you can skip to each bit of the vlog in case one book interests you more than the other does so hopefully that's okay hopefully you enjoy this I know a lot of people enjoyed my Ruth Ware video and that's actually become quite popular now so hopefully I can do more of these little experiment challenge things I apologize for this angle but I have just done a full day of work I am absolutely exhausted so let me get through this part of the video before I fall asleep so I have started reading Firefly Lane which I think I said yesterday this would be the one that I would start with and I am it's about two girls Tully and Kate who become best friends and they're very different to begin with and Tully kind of helps Kate become more popular and then they're separated that's about as far as I have gotten so far so I am 65 pages in so I am enjoying it I'm enjoying the writing style but I feel like it's too early to tell if I'm going to love this book if I'm going to enjoy the characters because I feel like it's going to be a very character based story because it's about kind of their friendship and then their breaking up and then getting back together maybe I can already tell that Kristen Hannah's writing is going to be really easy to get into and I'm really excited to carry on with it so this is actually quite a long book it's over no it's almost 500 pages so I'm not going to finish it tonight but I'm hoping to fly through it quite quickly because I don't have very long before Four Winds come out comes out sorry and I really should have started this reading vlog sooner but I was already doing other projects and things so I am going to carry on reading this now I'm going to get out this terrible lighting and relax cozy up with a blanket and get some reading done I think my aim is tonight to get to page 200 that might be a bit ambitious but I think I can do it okay so last night I did manage to read up to page 203 of Five Fly Lane I am quite enjoying it it's not the it's not the most fast-paced book and there's not a very thrilling plot so at the moment it's following Kate and Tully who became friends when they were younger and they basically bonded became like sisters Tully didn't have a very good home life because her mother really wasn't capable of living Looking after her and so she was raised by her grandmother and then the two of them went off to college together the two girls not Tully and her grandmother. Kate starts to realise that maybe she's just following Tully around and doesn't really have her own thing going on. So that's about where I'm at right now. The two of them have graduated and they're kind of doing their real life stuff, postgraduate sort of uh, work. And yeah, I'm enjoying it. Again, it's not the most fast paced. I am really loving the friendship between the two of them though. That's definitely why I think I will carry on reading this book and why I'm going to enjoy the book towards the end because the bond between the two girls is absolutely lovely even if there are perhaps some issues that need to be talked about communicated and fixed I do love reading about the two of them and it kind of reminds me of my childhood best friend not so much in the way that their stories play out but just the fact that I had a really close friend like that who was basically like a sister to me growing up it's just quite relatable so I'm very much enjoying it I'm trying to finish the book today because I have so many other Kristen Hannah books to read so I still need to read obviously The Nightingale, The Great Alone and 
Four Winds and I have less than a week before The Four Winds comes out, a week exactly until the show for Firefly, Firefly Lane comes out. So I don't think I'm going to manage them all in one week but I want to get as close to the release dates as possible and I also need to recap this book in time for the TV show to come out so that recaptains can get those views. So I would really like to be able to finish this off today. I do have 300 pages left I think, 260, 270-ish. So I might not manage it but I'm going to read it my on my lunch break and also after to work so hopefully I can get most of the way through and if I won't finish it today I should finish it first thing tomorrow and I should be able to get a recap up and then I'm probably going to start the next book I don't know which one I want to read though it depends how much I like the ending of this one and how much it makes me cry because I really think that the nightingale is going to make me sob and if I'm not in the mood after reading this one to cry like that I'm probably going to pick up maybe the grace alone which might not make me cry as much I don't really know I've heard her books are all really emotional so I'm kind of prepared to be a bit weepy so yeah that's my current update as I am about halfway through I will probably check in again a bit later on as I'm nearing the end and I'll give you my thoughts um as a wrap up as well once I get there well it definitely made me cry focus okay so it's the next morning now I have slightly recovered from firefly lane this oh my team's messages are going off this was actually really really good I'm gonna have to mute my computer one second. I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna give it four stars. It's not quite an all time favorite because it made me cry so much towards the end. The last 50 pages or so were brutal because it evoked so much emotion in me. I do want to give it a high rating, even though it's not really an all time favorite. It doesn't really add anything new to the literary genre, but I did really like reading about the girl's relationship and I definitely got very attached to them. I think towards the end or rather like third quarter of the book, it did start to lose me a little bit just because I found the girl lives then to be less relatable or the women's lives to be less relatable because they're older and they had other stuff going on that I haven't experienced myself yet so in the run-up to their maybe 30s mid 30s it was all quite relatable to me and then after that not so much but it was still really good there were some dramatic moments I did see the ending coming I was waiting for that kind of storyline to happen so that didn't really take away from my enjoyment at all I felt a bit prepared for it when it did happen but then I still got very very sad and cried a lot so there's that I'm really looking forward to reading the next book now for this challenge I'm so excited I'm really glad that I enjoyed this one so much so I have decided that my next one is going to be the nightingale just because it's the next one that i had at hand can't wait to read this one this one's historical about two sisters or two girls best friends who live in france and then france is invaded by the nazis so it's set during world war ii i read one chapter of this last night and then i just couldn't handle it anymore because i was still recovering from firefly lane but i'm going to start reading this one at lunchtime today and i'm really excited i can't wait i'm hoping i'm going to love this one except world war ii fiction isn't really my go-to genre so i'm not too sure but I will give you a proper summary once I've started it and then tell you my initial feelings. So I've started The Nightingale. I look kind of ill at the moment because I kind of am. I've got a raging headache and I think I need to go and lie down. But I just wanted to give you an update. I have read hundred or so pages of the nightingale i can't say that i'm as attached to these characters as i was to the characters in firefly lane however it's still a very fast-paced read and it's gripping and interesting and i know that it's going to get really emotional so i'm going to carry on with it i'm hoping if i don't fall asleep too early to get to maybe page 100 and no 250 maybe tonight so read another 150 pages i would love to be able to finish it but i just don't think i'm going to manage it i'm currently watching the bloomsbury night in and that's kind of given me a bit of a headache because my eyes hurt everything hurts i am in pain so i just need to i think go and lie in bed and read some more of this book so i can't remember if i've said properly what this is about but i'm going to say that in my next clip because i am honestly looking kind of like death right now i don't want to subject you to this clip any more than I have to. Okay, so I finished The Nightingale yesterday. Yesterday morning, I think. I didn't get to the page 250, like I said, I was going to the evening before. I did manage to finish the book off shortly after. I'm now currently questioning everything because I'm not sure how to compare this to Firefly Lane because it feels like such a different book. Like, Kristen Hannah's writing style is similar. Elements are similar, but they're just very different stories. I don't know. I don't know if this video is going to make much sense. Maybe her other two books are going to be entirely different, the other two books I'm going to read. So far, this feels not like a different writer wrote it, but she wrote this in a very different time of her life. I don't know if she did or not. I can't. I'm gonna have to look into this. But yeah, it feels very, very different. And I did enjoy this one. I didn't cry as much as I thought I was going to. I thought out of all of the books, this would be the one that would break me because it's about World War II. And that was obviously a very stressful and upsetting time. But I didn't really 
cry all that much and while I was upset and I was attached to the characters I held myself back I think I think I was able to do that I really liked this book like I said I gave it four stars I really liked the sisters and I do wish that there was more about their relationship that I could have kind of read about and then held on to because this is kind of about the two sisters and them coming back together after all of the tragedy of war or not as the case may be but you don't really get much about them in the beginning it's really freaking sad because the sisters aren't really connected at all there's a massive age gap between them and yeah it's really sad and it's supposed to be that way and i think they're not meant to be close in the beginning and they're meant to have all of these issues otherwise it wouldn't be you know progression but i do wish that we had seen a bit more of their childhood maybe in the beginning just to show kind of how they were and how they then got broken apart I'm trying really hard not to spoil things but I think the relationship could have been handled a bit better. I also think that the pacing could have been better as well because there was a lot of build up to the war or to France being occupied and then there was also a lot about the beginning of the war but not so much about the ends of the war, the end of the war sorry, and the kind of way that things kind of, I don't want to say petered out but it was kind of how it was portrayed kind of things started to get better and there wasn't so much about that and i really would have liked to have read more about one of the sisters antics during the war it was very much about her domestic life rather than things that she may or may not have done because that came about towards the end so i feel like it could have focused a bit more on that and on her the things that she was doing to help her community because we got a lot of that from one of the sisters but not so much from the other so yeah i think it could have been a better balance of all sorts of things but like i said i did really enjoy it i'm going to give it four stars i don't know which book to read next because i'm meant to be doing this weekend a net galley readathon and so i could read four wins for that but i also have a bunch of other net galley books that i should be reading so yeah i don't know I don't know I'll have to think about this I'm not sure which books to read next so I'm gonna take some time to think about it record some videos and then decide good morning I have just started the great alone before I start work I'm still quite tired it's still quite early but I have read 40 pages of it so far I don't think I'm far enough through to actually come up with an opinion on it just yet but yeah I'm enjoying it I'm looking forward to reading it and this one is actually set in Alaska and so it's kind of perfect reading for this very very frosty weather that we're currently having right now. So this is about a girl called Lenny whose parents are having issues. Um, I think there's domestic abuse in there somewhere but it hasn't really reared its head yet, at least explicitly. Um, so Lenny and her parents move to Alaska to start a new life there. Her dad is suffering from alcoholism and PTSD from the Vietnam War. Lenny has been moving around a lot so they move to Alaska without really knowing what they're doing. And that's about as far as I've got so far. I'm not far through enough to tell you whether or not I'm going to enjoy it more than the other two books though, so I'll keep you posted. It's the next morning now and I have read a grand total of 210 pages of The Great Alone. I have to say, I'm not enjoying this one as much as I was enjoying the others, but I think that's more to do with the subject matter and the lack of friendship in this one. I do really enjoy the setting and I really enjoy all of the townsfolk coming together and that kind of thing, but there's no kind of best friendship like there was in Firefly Lane and no sisterly friendship like there was or sisterly relationship like there was in The Nightingale but I think the friendship is going to become more prominent towards the end of this book like in the second half that I'm reading now and like I said the subject matter is difficult to read about there's a lot of domestic abuse and before I think yesterday I said that it's not very explicit but it has become more explicit you actually see the dad hitting the mum you see the mum being quite badly hurt and the family is very scared of him so it's a prominent theme throughout even though at the beginning it wasn't uh, so explicit now that Lenny has realised that's what's happening that's what her dad does to her mum it's kind of all coming out now and it's very difficult for me to read about but I am still enjoying the book and mm. I'm going to finish it off today because I need to get to the four wins very soon and um, I'm doing my net galley readathon which will have already happened by the time you watch this um, and I'm hoping to read the four wins during that. Like I said I'm really enjoying the setting for this one as well so I'm going to hopefully finish it off today while it's nice and frosty so I'm kind of like in the Alaskan zone. So I've been for a very brief run. Uh, I had to stop part way through because it's just so freaking cold out there. We were running like straight into the wind. The weather app says that it feels like minus eight so it wasn't a very good run but I did get back early and finish The Great Alone. Again this is another one that feels different to the other two so I don't really know how I'm going to rank them in terms of enjoyment and which one I think is best because they're all such different books but with the same kind of feelings surrounding them. And also I wanted to mention trigger warnings for cancer 
all three of these books apparently Kristen Hannah has some sort of obsession and I want everyone to be aware that the trigger warning is there I won't tell you like any spoilers but cancer trigger warnings so i'm going to start the four winds next it's my last one i'm going to be reading for this vlog i'm really excited i'm really struggling with figuring out how to rank these i think my current order is this maybe but also i'm struggling with where to put the great alone and firefly lane and i'm not entirely sure nightingale is my favorite so i don't know this vlog is not very helpful and i can't decide yet so hopefully after i finish the four wins i'll have a clear idea of what like the winner the best book from her is and which one i like the most i'm just about to start the four wins by kristen hannah obviously this is a kristen hannah vlog i don't know what to expect from this one so i don't really know much about so i know that it's about a woman living during the great depression i'm not exactly sure what the great depression was in america my u.s history is not great i imagine it's something to do with people not having jobs or work and that's all i know about it and the cover has some wheat in it so i think it's set in the south maybe in texas i'm not sure so yeah i don't really know what to expect from this one at all and because it's quite a new book i don't really know other people's opinions on it either so nothing's going to influence my opinions on this one i'm quite excited about reading it i'm looking forward to seeing if it's going to be a favorite or if it's going to kind of rank the same as all of Kristen Hannah's other books and I'm really happy that this is the last one as well so I'm looking forward to eventually ranking these books and figuring out which one I like the best. I'll get back to you once I have started it and once I have something to say. So I've read about 20% now this morning of The Four Winds and I'm enjoying it. It's a very fast read, it's a lot faster paced than her other books I found. Not that those were slow paced but this is this one is particularly fast. So I got through about 20% in less than an hour, so that's good. I don't really have any strong opinions on it just yet. So it's about a woman called Elsa who is 25, or at the start she's 25, and she's always been told that she's not very pretty and her parents don't really want her to go off and do anything. They think that she's kind of always sick. And she gets pregnant after a couple of one-night stands, and so she marries into an Italian family in Texas. She has the baby, and then it skips to 13 years later when there's a massive drought. The farmers are struggling because nothing is growing and that's about as far as I am at right now so I'm enjoying it I feel really bad for Elsa in particular because she's always kind of been told by her family she's not very pretty and she hasn't really got much going for her her daughter seems to be in one of those phases where she really doesn't like her so yeah I'm enjoying it so far it's fast paced and I'm looking forward to continuing on I've stayed up way too late reading the four winds and I finished it at midnight now it's super early the next morning and I'm so tired but I enjoyed it it wasn't my favourite, I know that for a fact, but I do have some more things to say about it, but I think I'm gonna do like a full review kind of section at the end of this vlog, like I did with my Ruth Aware vlog. It was a good book, I'm gonna give it four stars. I might write out my review first, post it on NetGalley, and then use that as something to like prompt what I talk about in this video. I guess now that I've read all four books, I can figure out how I'm going to rank them somehow, and then we'll get on to the review ranking portion of the video in like two seconds for you probably a couple of days for me. So we are back where we started, ready for a wrap up. I'm going to tell you which of Kristen Hannah's books I liked the most. As you could see throughout my reading vlog, it was quite difficult for me to choose one because I just, I could not tell which one I enjoyed. I mean, I enjoyed all of them, but I couldn't tell because they were such different books, even though they had the same kind of underlying themes, also the writing style and the same like vibes, they were still all quite different. So the first one, if you've seen the vlog, you'll know you might have just jumped to this point. The first one that I read was Five Fly Lane, gave it four stars. I really enjoyed this one. This is about two best friends called Tully and Kate, I believe. I'm rubbish with names, I'm so sorry. And they become best friends when they are in high school and then it follows them as they are growing up. And they go into the same career originally and then they sort of slowly start to drift apart and slowly some issues that the two of them have together come to light. I really enjoyed this one, it made me cry. I was sobbing while reading the ending to this one and it has recently been turned into a Netflix show. Although I don't think the entire book has been covered yet. I think there might be another season. I haven't seen that yet. I was going to try and watch it for this vlog but I just was not in the mood to cry again so I didn't do it. But I might do a separate video comparing the book to the show. I then read The Nightingale which is a historical fiction book. I don't know if this is Kristen Hannah's first historical fiction book but it's the first one I read the other one was kind of more literary fiction this one is about two sisters who are in France when it becomes occupied by Nazi German soldiers one of them goes off to kind of join the resistance and one of them stays with her family while her husband goes off to war and then a Nazi soldier 
comes to stay in her house. I really enjoyed this one too. I cried again, but not as much as I did with Firefly Lane. This one was still very emotional. And I do think if I had read it first, I probably would have cried more, but I think I burnt myself out with Firefly Lane, to be honest. I did still really enjoy this one though. And it was very heart wrenching. The sister's relationship was very interesting to me because they were kind of drifting apart, but they still had a connection there that kept bringing them back to one another. I do think that the sister's relationship could have been focused on a little bit more and handled perhaps a little bit differently, but as it stands, it was a really good book and after reading this one I realised that Chris and Hannah tends to write books about women who are surviving and their relationships with each other rather than focusing on a romantic relationship for example or another male character's kind of growth uh, development or anything it's always about the women which I really appreciate. I gave that one four stars can't remember if I said. I then read The Greats Alone this one is set in Alaska basically a girl called Lenny and her parents moved to Alaska her dad is suffering from PTSD after fighting in the Vietnam War. He was a prisoner of war, he was released, and then, yeah, he's suffering a lot. And then his personality kind of changes and he becomes quite abusive, which isn't great because Lenny and her mother are now stuck with him in the Alaskan wilderness, while he kind of becomes obsessed with like the end of days and becomes more and more paranoid. And it was really interesting to see kind of his development and his journey. But this book was still, like I said, mainly about the women. It was about the daughter, Lenny, as she grows up in Alaska and kind of finds her way basically. And she gets into a relationship with someone up there and then it's also about her relationship with her mother how her mother handled the situation because her mother was obviously being abused and kind of what the line would be in the parents relationship i'm being quite vague because i don't want to give anything away but yeah i really enjoyed this one actually i really enjoyed the setting while i was reading it i don't think it was all that impactful until i'd finished it and then i kind of thought about it some more and then all of a sudden i was like yes this is the one so i gave this one four stars as well and then i don't actually own a physical copy of it yet but this is <laughs> the four winds this is her latest book it's set during the great depression so there's a woman called elsa who lives in texas and through circumstances she becomes pregnant marries into to an Italian family and works on their farm. A decade later, farmers aren't doing so well because there's a drought and everything is drying up. Elsa and her two children go off to California because apparently there are more opportunities there and it's very likely they'll be able to get a job on some farm or another, but that's not necessarily the case. And they realize that the government has been bringing all of these people over from other states and telling them they're going to be able to work in California and they can't, so they're forced to live in poverty, basically, in camps. I didn't enjoy this one as much as I enjoyed the other books by Kristen Hanna, but I did still really like it. I gave it four stars again. I do think having read all of her books so closely together, I was able to pick up on more kind of trends and the flow of Kristen Hanna's writing. It's a very similar <laughs> flow throughout all of these books, but I didn't mind that so much. And I think I would have preferred this one a bit more if I'd have spent more time with the main character, but it's also about her relationship with her daughter, which I really appreciated as well. It was really good. So now we're going to get on to the ranking and I'm going to tell you which one I think is best. These are obviously my own opinions. This is all based on my kind of enjoyment of all of the books and also kind of how they all hold up together. So at the bottom of the list, even though I did still really enjoy it, is The Four Winds. This is obviously the latest one that I read and while I did enjoy it, I don't think it was as impactful as the other books, but I did really, really enjoy the setting because I haven't really read much set during the Great Depression in the US before. So that's a topic that was introduced to me with this one and I'm really pleased that it was. Next we have Firefly Lane in third place. Like I said, I did really enjoy this one, but I think I prefer Kristen Hanna's historical books to her more literary ones like this one, just because I preferred to explore different settings through Kristen Hanna's books. And while this one did deal with a lot, it wasn't quite as dark as the other two, so that's why this one is in third place. And next, quite shockingly, maybe if you've watched the reading vlog, this wouldn't have been the case, um, but my feelings have changed after sitting on these books for a while, and that is The Nightingale in second place. So yeah, I have nothing more to say about this one, really. I really, really enjoyed it. Loved how dark and brutal it was, but I also loved the sisters' relationship, and I think it was really well done. I have seen some reviews that say, um, the writing isn't great and some of the kind of timelines don't really match up in terms of like when a character is walking into a room so I think it probably could have done with more editing but this isn't actually something that I noticed myself so either it wasn't in this edition and it has been edited since or I just don't pay attention to these kinds of things so The Nightingale is in second place so that means in first place and the Kristen Hannah book that I think is the best is The Great Alone 
I picked this one because while I didn't love it while I was reading it, the more I thought about it, the more I did actually really appreciate the story and also the depictions of domestic abuse. It was difficult for me to read, but I still, yeah, like I said, really appreciated it and did end up really enjoying the book. I did notice that in three of these books, Kristen Hanna brings up cancer, which I didn't necessarily appreciate, but it's fine. We, uh, we got through it. I think I would definitely be interested in reading more of Kristen Hanna's books in the future. I'm not so sure about her previous books because I don't know if they're more literary like Firefly Lane rather than her more recent books so I don't know but hopefully you enjoyed this video here is my final ranking thank you so much for watching this far if you have and I'll speak to you all in the next one bye